Hey ChatGPT, write me a raw panel TCP client that connects to this IP address on port 9923, then initializes the connection by sending list new line to the server. Then it listens for fader input positions. They look like these. Fader value, t the value 10 is uh, the fader number and the values 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, wait, what? The value 10 is the fader number? Yeah, and the numbers are 9, 10, 11, 12. The fader 9, 10, and 11 are used. The, um, their value ranges are from 0 to 1000, setting RGNB values respectively in the range 0 to 255 to set HTML color of a web page, which is our funny little target for this exercise. Make sure to ignore commands that start not with HWC. The application should create an HTTP server, which opens a website connection to the application, and then the faders are moved. And as the faders are moved, RGNB values from the faders shall be sent to the browser and shall change the background color of the web page. The final fader 12 will set an overall intensity of the background. Now, these motorized faders, we want feedback from the web browser. So when we move the cursor around, we want RGB values sent back, and they can set the position of the fader by this command and write it all in Go. So with this little exercise for ChatGPT, which is now generating faithfully code for us. Yeah, so it's really generating a lot of code. We'll test that in a moment. So um, I just want to introduce you to what we're trying to do. We have a WaveBot Mini here next to us, and we want to use the faders to have some fun with a web page, which is like a virtual device that you could control. So this whole video is about how can you use Skyhoy panels with the raw panel server implementation um, running on it to, um, to, to make your own control software to control devices or whatever you want. But it's so easy to integrate with raw panel that I want to show you how this can be uh, done and kickstarted by ChatGPT, which is uh, great for starting these things up and less great to make them perfect. But this is where your brain comes into the mix. And we're writing this in Golang, which is my definitely favorite language of all that I could think of. So um, I hope I also inspire you to uh, get on board with Golang. The uh, broad panel protocol is quite simple, and I want to show you uh, real quick here how this works. So if we have a panel like this one, it usually shows you the IP address. And on this IP address, we could quickly, uh, oh, sorry, I wanted to have that in the web browser because then I, oh, this is a little less speedy, Casper. Yes, thank you. So we now log in and skip this time. Uh, so usually you see reactor here, which is currently messed up on this panel for whatever reason. Uh, it is running though. Um, we can disable it because we don't need reactor for what we're doing right now. We need to go to hardware manager and you need to make sure you listen on port. This is probably why it was messed up a moment ago. Listening on port means that this wave port is able to accept connections from PuTTY, from NC, from Telnet. So basically that's what I'm doing here. And as you do so, you would typically type in list and enter because then you see I'm able to move the faders like this and I receive these commands. So that's essentially what ChatGPT's code should detect on our behalf and do something useful with. I also want to show you something else, which is maybe in this other terminal here. No, okay. So let's just shut this one down. But if I open this one up, I have Raw Panel Explorer, which is a tool you find on our GitHub repository. So if you go to Skahoy, and now you see all our internal repos, but uh, Explorer, let's see. Raw Panel Explorer is a public repository from Skyhoy. So with this one, you can download releases. And these releases, you can run uh, Mac, Windows, Linux. And this is what I am um, doing uh, now uh, because I downloaded it previously. So inside of downloads, raw panel explorer if i open this one up it it uh, runs an application with a web browser uh, web server here so that i can i can basically search for raw panel devices on my network and here we find the waveboard mini so if i just connect to this real quick i want to show you a real cool tool here that will help me to validate different things first of all if i move the fader you see that we are receiving these uh, values also into the raw panel explorer but what i can also do is in return i could for instance turn on a color and I can also um, turn on the light behind the backlight of a button. 
uh, any of these. And it's it's really useful because you see the commands that we need to send over to the panel are found right here. So the command that we want to use for this one, because it's motorized faders, would be the position parameters. So let's just pick this fader and then choose this one called position. And then if I type in 100 or 1000, you see the fader moves to the top. If I type in 500, it moves to the middle. And if I type in zero, it moves to the lowest position. And that's exactly what I actually used in the instructions to ChatGPT to use this um, extended hardware uh, component return values in order to set position of the fader. So let's see if it picks that up correctly. Let's get over to the code. So in here, we'll just copy this code and see if it runs. But um, in my repo, I want to create a new folder. We will call this faders. And inside this folder, we will create a new file and call it main.go, which is usually what you do when you create Go code. So, um, well, inside of this one folder, let's just use the terminal to get that. Go, no, wait, I'll just save this real quick. Go mod tidy. All right. No, 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 go mod in it. That's the first thing I need to do. Oh, I need to have a name. We'll call it faders. Yes, go mod tidy as instructed. Thank you. And then let's go run dot, all right? Go run dot, and it's now actually running with the panel. Uh, if it's connected or not, let's just quickly disconnect our own connection here because that usually should. Uh, no, wait, 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 wait. Okay, yeah, we. Yeah, we don't need that now. I disconnected completely from the panel, so it looks like this. But as I'm now starting up, it apparently receives the connection. And as I'm moving a fader, something might happen, but we don't know because essentially I asked it to create a a web server. Um, you know, what would be useful with these things would be to ask the code to actually output a little bit of information so we know what is happening. But we could also just assume that this is all good. Now, what is the web server port that it chose for us? Good question, right? Uh, and by the way, if we look at how it has been structured, let's just check this out quickly. So we have, uh, it creates a variable for fader RGB values, which is nice, although it's an integer not bytes. Starts the TCP client, starts the WebSocket server, and it has a handle function for this one, and it's listening on this port. Okay, so that's good to know. It means that if we actually run this code, we are running it right now, then we should be able to, oh, localhost, it's uh, right here. All right, okay, so page not found, not a good, not a good sign. Uh, why is that now? Why is that? Why is that? Okay, page not found. Uh, because I don't have an index HTML file, so, you know, I'll have to ask it to not give me that. So whatever else is happening, uh, start TCP client, and it is connecting, it is initializing by sending this, and then it is running through this loop, and any time it receives data, it will process the fader input, and then it will split by this line break, which is kind of okay. And then it has this prefix, it will split it up into these two parts with a fade ID and position and so on. So actually for this one, I would now manually ask it to um, print. I want to see fader numbers coming out of this one and fader position. So that could be a useful little thing just to check. Okay, doesn't work. This is not, it, it's just showing me zero and zero, not a good thing. You know, I think we need to go back and instruct ChatGPT just a tiny bit more. Okay, doesn't work so well. I see this on localhost 8080. So you should not assume an index.html page, you must make some HTML code yourself, please. Second thing, you are passing of fader inputs are wrong. First of all, please output a bit of info on the values in the console. But 
here are examples of fader input so you can fix the parsing okay and then we will just go over here we'll connect to this and then just move oh, whoa, 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 whoa. just list to make it ascii and then just a little bit of fader input here so we'll just copy paste this over and let chat gpt work on that now hopefully it will actually come up with better code in this case and um it's apologizing for the oversight that's good 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 job there and um let me see okay that does it bring us all the way to the end uh okay regarding fader input it's actually giving me snippets of code so i think it makes sense that it does so we just need to substitute the functions it is asking us to substitute so fair enough Ooh. just paste this in let's hope this is better of course at some point we should actually yeah rest of code remains the same so we'll just fix the main function like that include this one since it seems to be intent on that and then uh okay so it's just starting up here paste in here let's see what happens go now uh fader positions nothing is read out to us so once again but hey we will just go down to this position and type fader num and fader position all right so let's just quickly check if our fader positions are it, it looks much better right Okay, so that looks nice. I actually am thinking if I put this line before, just a moment, no, no, I couldn't have done that because these are defined here. Now, anyway, um, that might be okay. So at this point, we should really get back to our web browser and reload this page and then see if something useful is happening here. No, it is not super useful what is happening. I think this is where we need to actually have ChatGPT extend this function as well. Hey, we also need you to implement this function. Certainly, start WebSocket server and what is it doing? It is setting up this one, reading these, removing Okay, so I think ChatGPT is a little bit lazy this morning. Sometimes what happens is that you give it too much information to, you know, you ask it to do too many things and it will start doing these, you know, things in between and uh, um, basically break the answer down into smaller bits and pieces. And okay, finally it worked. <laughs> But definitely, I don't get the fader feedback at this point. So, um, but I can, and the intensity is, you know, something for itself. We need, we need this value, the intensity value over here, to basically scale the others. But uh, right now, we are, we are not doing that. But at least I can change the color, the background color of this web page using my my faders. My intention was also to have the motorized faders coming back. Okay, let's give it a shot and see if we can have ChatGPT do this. So, um, thanks. It's kind of nice, but I would now like you to pick up the mouse movements and send that value back in a range from 0 to 250. Uh, 55. Um, and when the server receives this value, it shall change the position of the first fader. Ref the previously shared command for that. Okay, let's see what happens if it can actually do something useful with this. Okay, so what does it say here? To achieve this, you need to capture the mouse movements and send the RGB values over the WebSocket server. And the server will then use these RGB values. You update the HTML and JavaScript to capture the mouse movements. So um, probably we can copy paste this more or less because it is still receiving things. All right, so that's nice. Let's do it. And we'll just basically substitute this code. 
Uh, what else does it say that we need to do in the update? If we yeah we capture so and so and so, and then we have this start WebSocket server thingy, where when we are reading the messages, it should actually you know marshal these things, and then it should adjust first fader position. So what is adjust first? <sighs> okay, so it's now asking us to do this again. Lazy, 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 ChatGPT. Now. Um, Can you implement adjust first fader position for us? And then in the meantime, I'll just go over here and paste this code in. Okay, yes, and then we we'll see what it comes up with in this case. So it's taking the position, it is multiplying by 1000 and dividing it down, that is true. And it actually looks like this could work, but I do know one thing is not going to work. And send raw panel command, okay, yes. Um, I know one thing already, because I've done this a few times, and um, I am, a uh, let me just real quick check, do we, yes, we had that one. Okay, so actually, does it compile? Yes, it compiles, that's nice. But I do know one thing, and that is every time we have a command like this, we actually need, and this is a string, we need to put a line ending in. And if we don't, then it won't be accepted on the raw panel server side, which is now done. And it actually gives me some sort of hope that this might work. Uh, okay, let's just try it. Otherwise, we need to debug once again. Ah, uh, my phone stopped recording. That's super cool. Okay, somewhere along the the, the line, the, um, the the phone stopped recording, but now um, I don't know when it did, but I wanna show you that I can move the faders and we can change the colors of the web page just once again. And what we just did, I was moving the mouse around on the web, on the screen, I was asking, chat GPT to send the position values back and now it's fed into the fader. So there you go, guys. Once again, a fun session with chat GPT and some coding using raw panel protocol, which is embedded in every Skyhoy device. So you can do your own custom integrations on waveboards. There are ways to put stuff into the display. I show that in other videos. Hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to our channel to stay tuned for many more fun news and useful news with Skyhoy products for control of broadcast and AV equipment.